Montgomery County Volunteer Week involves over 70 projects and thousands of volunteer hours during a week of service in October. Project Linus is one of the nonprofit organizations that Travel Television visited. Check out the Montgomery County Volunteer Center's Week of Service site for more information. I'm Carolyn Lichtenstein. I'm the coordinator of the Montgomery County chapter of Project Linus. Project Linus is a nationwide organization that makes blankets for children who have been traumatized by various events in their lives. It started many years ago when somebody thought having a a uh, security blanket like Linus of Peanuts fame would help the child feel better. I retired a couple years ago and one of the things I really like to do is knit. So I thought um, I would knit for babies. Schools make them, teachers will do that with their class rooms. Uh, Girl Scout troops, we have a few Girl Scout troops who are going to make it, church groups. So um, it's often an event an activity that a whole group does. Um, if you would like to help and you, well, you can knit a blanket, you can crochet a blanket, you can quilt a blanket, you can make a blanket that doesn't require any sewing or knitting or anything. We need blankets of multiple sizes, you know, from the biggest fleece blankets to the smallest little receiving blanket for newborns. And we have various places throughout the county where people can bring blankets so they don't have to come to one place. There's, you know, trying to cover the whole county, which is huge. Once somebody provides the blankets to us, we sew a Project Linus little label on it so that the child who gets the blanket always knows that the blanket came from Project Linus. I've lined up um, several places that want to get our blankets. The Child Welfare Service Program of Montgomery County, and that's the, pro the Department of Montgomery County Government that um, oversees children in foster care. I've also donated blankets to two shelters, two family shelters with lots of kids. Another group that we are going to be bringing blankets to is a group called Baby's Bounty that provides uh, supplies to about-to-be new mothers. Um, who need help. We're going to be adding more donation places as we have more blankets. People have donated a lot of yarn, a lot of fabric for making quilts. We just want to, you know, make it into more of a community of um, Project Linus blanketeers. It's exciting to see so many people coming out and wanting to help and um, we are getting the word out in the community. If you'd like to get involved in Project Linus, we would love to have you. We have a Facebook page, so you can go to the Facebook page and it has all the information that you need to get in touch. Uh, if you go to the Project Linus uh, website, it's uh, www.projectlinus.org, that's the national website. Um, you can email me at projectlinus.mc at gmail.com. The uh, chapter is just starting. We're going to have a monthly meeting. It will be the fourth Monday of uh, every month at 7 o'clock in Share Torah Synagogue. So please come and join us. My name is Jerry Jones. Here we are at the VA Medical Facility here in Washington, D.C., and I'm a volunteer. I've been volunteering here now at the VA for over nine years. Um, for the last past nine years, I've won several awards. It makes you feel good to volunteer. You know, when you give back to the community and to ones who are reaching out for help. Um, for the last past two years, I have won the Volunteer of the Year Award. I even won the Presidential Award. Just giving back to the community, as I stress, and helping people on an everyday, being it makes you feel like a humanitarian, and it makes you feel good inside, and your spirit feel good inside. I work at the front desk at the VA as the information specialist. My duty is, as the veterans come into the hospital, to direct them to the different departments, specialty clinics, patient advocate, parking, cafeteria, metro access. That's one of the biggest ones. We have our veterans and our people that come here every day on metro access, and my main duty is to make sure 
that the last veteran is left the hospital for the day on their Metro SS return back home trip. And that makes me feel good as being a veteran. Do you love the Beatles? I mean, do you love the Beatles? Many in the world do. So experience the Beatles story only in Liverpool. You will see reproductions like this window display from Frank Hesse's music shop where the Beatles shop for many of their early instruments. And you'll also see a reproduction of Matthew Street. And as you walk along Matthew Street, you will come to the Cavern Club. This is the place where the Beatles played 292 times before taking the world by storm. Imagine you're a record store owner here in Liverpool. Customers keep coming in asking you about a band named the Beatles. You never heard of them, but you know they're playing at a place called the Cavern. You head down there, you listen in, you love what you hear, and you eventually become their manager. That's the story of Brian Epstein, who was the first manager for the Beatles. I didn't know about Epstein before visiting the Beatles story, and I'm sure there are plenty of things you'll learn as you venture through this great history. The final stop of the story is this area known as Imagine. Experience the Beatles story in a transformed setting known as Liverpool. I will get things done for America to make our people safer, smarter, and healthier. I will bring Americans together to strengthen our communities. Faced with apathy, I will take action. Faced with conflict, I will seek common ground. Faced with adversity, I will persevere. I will carry this commitment with me this year and beyond. I'm an AmeriCorps member and I will get things done. The Battle of North Point stymied British plans for a land invasion in the War of 1812. This was followed by a 24-hour naval assault on Fort McHenry. The flag was raised after that battle, and Francis Scott Key was inspired to write the Star-Spangled Banner. On this bicentennial anniversary of these momentous events, volunteers created a replica by hand, just as the original was made. really see that this project is, is something that is a legacy, uh, that is going to be around, that uh, to have participated in it is something really powerful. Um, and you really get that from people all over the world. Volunteers were absolutely essential to this project. Uh, the first thing we had to do was to cut the fabric, which was absolutely terrifying to me. So I had to assign that to, to a couple of our volunteers who are, you know, very good at doing this because um, this entire project is so big and, and you just, um, it can be very uh, daunting at times. Our volunteers are fabulous women and they uh, are real artists when it comes to stitching and sewing. Um, and they're willing to do just about anything. So they're, they're wonderfully enthusiastic in fundraising. Uh, they're wonderfully enthusiastic in sewing. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's probably been the highlight of the project for me to actually be able to work with uh, all of the people, all these volunteers that are coming in. So we've had people come in from ev almost every state in the union, including Alaska and Hawaii. We had several people from around the world. We did have a family from Hong Kong. 
and uh, I had the privilege of sitting down and helping them put their stitches in. It was they were excited about it, and I was just as excited to have them here. I'm meeting a lot of wonderful people, um, hearing a lot of wonderful stories. I was actually here last Sunday uh, for the public sewing day. Saw people from all over the world, all over the country that came in to just put a stitch in the flag. Um, and it's an exciting, exciting project. I'm so glad that I became a part of it. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, we have some of the best quilters probably in the country that are in this room, some of the best sewers. And you couldn't, you couldn't pay to go to conferences and meet these people and have the wonderful experiences we've had. And I thought, wow, what a great chance to be part of history. And so I've been coming up, I think this is the sixth time I've been here. I've been coming up with a couple of friends and um, stitching, working on the flag kits, um, doing just about anything that you know needed to be done. This has been a, an outstanding experience. Um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to recreate this flag. I'm honored to have been able to do it and I get goosebumps when I talk about it. My mom used to say to me that your talents are God's gift to you and what you make of them is your gift back to God. So volunteering is one of the ways that we have an opportunity to give back. Several years ago, my husband and I had the opportunity to create a small family foundation. And fortunately, he and I agree on what the focus of that should be. And our passion is to support organizations that are helping people who are trying to help themselves. Um, closing the opportunity gap is a phrase that's frequently used to describe that. But we have identified a number of fantastic grantees in both Baltimore and Chicago who are uh, engaged in a variety of programs that really work with people young and old who are trying to turn their lives around. So I have lobbied for a financial institution. I've lobbied for the Adler Planetarium. I've helped organizations in Chicago and in Baltimore develop their government relations programs and development, uh, develop their lobbying strategy, which for a lot of nonprofits is really important because a lot of nonprofits rely on the government, be it state, federal, or local, for a big chunk of their financial resources. They need to communicate their message. I'm very enthusiastic about sharing the great work that's being done here. And frankly, the great work that's being done on the ground throughout the country. It's a really compelling story of changing lives and improving lives being done by the millions of volunteers that CNCS supports. And the key is to get that story out to more people because the more people, the more decision makers who are aware of the great work being done here, the more support we will have throughout the administration, the Congress, and with decision makers at the state and local level. So I'm looking forward to getting out of Washington, D.C. and meeting with grantees throughout the country. I'm looking forward to seeing the projects they're working on and the impact that those projects are making. It's going to be fun. General Overseer of Hope for Life in Sierra Leone. Hope for Life in Sierra Leone is a non-profitable organization that is geared towards helping school-going children, the needy, and widows. My name is Sierra Fatima Tanyuma, Director for Hope for Life in Sierra Leone. Hope for Life as an NGO. We are donating 
school item to all the kids in Sierra Leone. At least, I can remember, we have donated at least more than 37 schools in Sierra Leone. We give hope to the hopeless. So far, we have donated medical equipment to various hospitals. Mm -hmm. We're taking care of some orphans. My name is Amat Jambari. I'm a staff of Hope for Life in Sierra Leone. We are a non-government organization which is assisting schools and assisting children, school-going children. We have been giving out books, shoes, pen, pencil to schools and to school children to motivate them, to inspire them, to learn. And we have been doing this for over five to six years now. And we have been doing this just to motivate children, to inspire them, for them to know that education is the key to success. My name is Georgiana Meriganda. I want to thank Hope for Life in Sierra Leone to letting me, for the opportunity to let me learn computer. My name is John Pandy. I am a staff of Hope for Life in Sierra Leone. Hope for Life in Sierra Leone. Hope for Life, we donate books to students. We donate school material. Samba Jimmy, I'm working here at Hope for Life Sierra Leone, and me working for Hope for Life Sierra Leone, our main priority is giving education to the nation. My name is Mohamed Mojen, I am in class 3 I want to thank Hope for Life in Sierra Leone for giving me the opportunity to learn computer. I am very grateful. Um, I'm Andrew Conte, the training manager for Hope for Life, and this is the cross-section of my class. Um, we teach advanced courses in Windows application and even conduct from the students from different categories of life, from higher institutions like the FBC, Magai, they are all here as you can see them, they can testify to that. My name is Sieli Tuesa. I am from the world. It's Magai College, I'm doing the hotel manager, hotel training, but I'm here I just to make computer. But as time goes on, I, have, I thank the teacher because now they have the patience to teach us, they have the courage. They ask them so many questions. The teacher questions, they can answer, answer with well, they can teach me well. And now I have know a lot about computer. My name is Koji. Well, personally, I'm a businessman. I'm here to build up my computer skills. I glad you will. The government come with this free education because now we own the gate. We they give books to the picking there, we they give school items them, we give shoes them to picking them for good school. So I'm so happy where the government come with free education. And I want to work with the government and in and for see that they implement this project with a free education. Precisely because of the free education program mm -hmm. yes. that the Ministry of Education has now been split into two. Mr. Bobby Smith, now the gentleman, a philanthropist, will make this simple for that we able to do on Sierra Leone. Hope for life, um, they try for tell we say, education are your rights. Most especially where the country under Julius Mada Bio in leadership don't enough tranga one for the education. So we picking them for land book. Dr. David Goyekan John, I work for Hope for Life in Sierra Leone. Hope for Life in Sierra Leone did for help the needy children and even the adults there. In fact, Usa Timapso, at the library, when I can see the books them we, we don't provide for St. Anthony School and other visitors them, go to St. Anthony School picking them of Kaya, so that they go able for it. We did give all our donations there like uh, school, uh, other school materials, wheelchairs to the handicap, uh, medical supplies, etc., etc. We go get for conduct some drama and uh, say competitions at uh, the school. Uh. Nina, we talk uh, we for hope for life in Sierra Leone. We talk on education. We hope for life 
be hope for life, for the give knowledge to picking them. Example, our teenage pregnancy. Picking for go school. You know, for they at that early age, you get the name. Teenage preg uh, pregnancy will make picking drop from school. Me and Anna, me and Takuma, mm -hmm. are they hope for hope for life. Me, they talk on this early teenage pregnancy. We see them now, them picking them, they get better at early age. Before we picking them, they go school, I'm not too concentrating on this uh, early pregnancy. But now we see them picking them, they born picking, and they not tell well. Picking when they send you for go school, for go school. We'll get stuff. We are praying that whenever something good again comes into the organization, mm -hmm. you think of our school. Mm -hmm. We are very happy as some parents are not able to afford, but with these around us, they can make use of it and help to promote learning. Thank you once again. Okay. God bless you. Thank you. We are working tirelessly to ensure that the agenda of the government, that is education for all, is being fulfilled. Now, um, having the director or the founder um, by the name of Mr. Bobby Smith, is a humanitarian activist, and he set up this institution from his little savings that he has been doing, making over the years. However, he came up with this idea to ensure that Swalonians, the vulnerable people, meet are met. And of course, they are working. He is having an industrial staff, and they are working tirelessly to ensure that the vision and the mission of Hope for Life in Sierra Leone is met. The directress is a hardworking woman, of course, the general overseer, Mrs. Aliko Oma, and a lot of of staff. They are very interesting when you come and interact with them. You see them giving hope for the hopeless. Ladies and gentlemen, I am appealing to you all that whatever way you want to contribute to humanity through these people, the office is open, they are located at Side Street opposite St. Anthony Church um, by National Stadium or behind St. Joseph Convent Secondary School. Whatever way you want to donate, materially or financially, the doors are open for you to contribute to humanity, to the development of humanity in Sierra Leone. Please don't hesitate. You can come at any time. Come around and see the offices small. They want to enlarge it. They want to concentrate on the provinces. They want to do mega things. But right now, they have a lot of activities at hand, including they want to do um, an essay competition, quiz competition, debating competition on the topic education for all, my right, my responsibility. That is what they are working on. And when I spoke to some of the staff, in fact, I discovered that right now they are trying to establish various um, uh, Hope for Life in Sierra Leone clubs in various schools within the country. And that agenda is already met. And now they are working quietly to get statistics of the number of students that are presently active, going, actively going to school. So please come to their aid and help whatever way you can. Thank you. The contact is on the screen. The website, the address, the email address, or the telephone number is on the screen. Contact them and God bless you. Thank you very much. Hello, Senior Corps. Many of you have asked us for tips and tools on how to produce your own videos. Here are a few tips to get you started. Producing videos consists of three simple steps. Planning, recording, and posting. Our first step, planning, is where you decide why are you recording the video. Ask yourself who the audience is. What do I want them to know and understand? Next, figure out who the star of your video is and where it will take place. Most of the time, our videos share our program volunteers' impact. Make sure that your Senior Core program is properly branded with the Senior Core S logo. Our second step is recording. Flip your phone around and confirm that your iPhone or Android phone has a camera on the backside. Remember that your phone is the camera. Make sure the battery is charged up and ready for action. Next, find your phone's video recording app icon and tap it. Before you push record, here's some general tips for recording video. Framing your shot. Remember to always turn your phone sideways. Make sure when you record not to get too close or too far away from the volunteer. Always include the Senior Corps S logo on their shirt, sticker, or sign for context. Also remember to review your sound. 
watch the video directly after you record. Make sure that you can clearly hear what's being said. The volunteer may need to speak louder than their normal volume. Re-record as many times as you need until you're happy with the video. Our third and final step is posting. Posting is where you decide what social media website you want to post the video to and post or upload your video. Let's do a brief review. Start with the three-step process to plan, record, and post. Always be aware of framing your shot correctly and reviewing the sound quality so we can hear clearly what is being said. When you're happy with your video and it's ready to be posted, that's a wrap! My name is Colette Lambert. I'm from Herndon, Virginia. My name is Rob Saunders. My name is Brad Mora and we're in Far Rockaway. My name is Jamie Crumpler. I'm, I'm from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And I'm here to hopefully make a difference. Um, I'm really simply just a neighbor helping out another neighbor. And I'm here to uh, work on houses that were damaged uh, or destroyed by Hurricane Sandy. We put in a project together, fix people's houses after Hurricane Sandy, two years. It's my first trip to Long Island. Uh, this is my second trip. Uh, this is my fifth uh, mission trip uh, to do restoration work. And, and I have had the privilege of helping in, in other um, areas such as New Orleans and some local projects at home as well.